Can your MIG welding machine compensate for super long wire stick out, go up and over ridges, down into valleys, on flat grounds, and even walk up steps without skipping a beat? Can it MIG weld aluminum straight out of the machine, right off the spool, no push pull gun, through a 15 foot whip that just happens to be wrapped around the leg of a table or even tied in a knot without bird nesting the spool? Can your multi process machine stick weld with usable features? like hot start timer, anti-stick, and an arc force dynamic? Can your multi-process machine TIG weld? Does it include a pulser? How about the coolest attacking function in the entire world? Would you believe that even after welding all of this metal, I still haven't even scratched the surface of what this machine is capable of? So straight up with you, Fronius Welding did absolutely send the Transteel 2200 multi-process MIG tick and stick unit for us to use free of charge, but they know, just the same as you guys know and trust, you can send all you want out to the fabrication series, but it's never going to guarantee you a fantastic or positive review. With that being said, we have our likes and gripes list, everything you need to know, or at least as much as I can show, because quite honestly, this thing just... I don't even think I've even come close to maybe a quarter of what it can do. But either way, what I have here in front of me and the things that you should definitely check out are in this video. So let's get into what it comes with straight out of the box as it arrives to you. Now I gotta run on a little tangent here and tell you something that I discovered for a brief moment here, and it's actually that it takes longer to get all of this stuff out of the box and packaging than it does to actually set the machine up and start welding. Absolutely brilliant. But let's take a look at this hardware. First we have a super hardcore 15 foot MIG whip. This thing is just absolutely insanely heavy duty. You can feel it. You can see that there's quality in it. It also includes a nice trigger extension with it, which is nice. You can actually remove it. You can keep it on there. It's up to you. Kind of keeps the heat down when you get into the super high amperage of spray arc. One thing you kind of notice with this thing is even the consumable tips and the nozzle itself is super hardcore. It's not chintzy. They definitely spared absolutely zero expense with this and this particular MIG whip even crosses over to the big brother Transteel 2700 which is just ridiculous. We're going to get into that one pretty soon too. Now on the other end of the whip is a connection to our machine. Now I'm usually at a loss for words to describe just how ridiculously heavy duty and rugged this thing is so here's a clip of me just beating the crap out of it and trying to get it to break loose. Like seriously this is just yeah <laughs> it's incredible. Now onto the ground or the earth lead. Now this is a solid cast brass clamp with a heavy duty cable and a dense 3550 connector on the other end. This is definitely going to make that strong connection when you start welding. Now the arc stinger is also very heavy duty with a very strong jaw, primarily made out of solid cast brass and on the other end has a dense 3550 connector. This is actually really cool. It's not an off brand or a cheap knockoff or anything like that. It's, it's very legit. Now each machine ships out with a multitude of power cables and adapters to fit many outlets and types of amperages for both 120 and 240 volt service. Now, these are actually really nice because they feature a patented male locking design that actually twists and locks in place into the back of the machine, which basically means when you unplug it there's nothing protruding from the machine and the fact that it's removable makes it really awesome. Now if you purchased your Fronius Transteel 2200 with the optional TIG package, you will get the TIG torch that comes with it. Now this is a Fronius torch made by Fronius. It is really awesome. has a very durable rubber coating on the outside of it to keep it well protected. The amp controls as well as the switch to actually turn it on and off and in and out of the arc is on the handle itself, which is actually pretty good. Good ergonomic design, takes a minute to get used to, but at the same time, it totally works. The TIG package also includes a nice little consumable starter package, which includes tungsten, collets, and everything else you need to actually get rolling, and comes in this nice little carrying case. So with that out of the way, let's get into some of these really awesome machine features. Now at first glance, the front menu and the panel display looks a little bit cluttered, but they've actually broken it down very systematically into very, very simple steps, in fact only four of them, to get you welding. First you select your wire type, then you choose your wire diameter, then select the gas that you're going to use. If you use the top left button to toggle to the machine thickness, you tell it how thick of the metal you're welding, and off you go. It's literally that easy. But speaking of the actual display, at the top we have our LED display. The top left button is our toggle menu. 
you. We'll go from the thickness to the amperage to the wire settings. This is so in case you need to know all of it or make fine adjustments. The top right toggle button goes for your arc length correction or trim, the current voltage display, and an arc force dynamic. Now all of these are set in synergic mode once you tell it what you're actually working on. It's all automatic, but if you want to switch over to manual mode, all of these are independently adjustable except for trim and thickness. Now toward the lower section you'll see a couple of different buttons that don't have anything to do with your selection. The number one and number two are memory modes. They are for storing your favorite jobs. Directly below each one of them, on the left you'll see your operation mode, and on the right you will see the process mode. You use all of these to make your adjustments, but if you press the process mode and the operation mode at the exact same time, you can access the menus for each process mode. Now here you will find things like pre-flow, post-flow, pulse settings, and more. Now some other very notable and totally awesome features include dual spool holders for medium and small spools, a consumable storage compartment to hold all of your rollers and tips and everything like that without scattering all over the machine, color-coded drive wheels which make it very easy to change out wire diameters and all the rest of that good stuff just by looking at it, not really having to read the side of it, like most others, and my personal favorite, dual gas ports for MIG and TIG welding. Totally cool. Now there are a lot of parameters on this one. Lots of adjustments, lots of menus, lots of capabilities, lots of possibilities, and every single one of those has their own adjustment inside of the menus. Once you learn all of those, they're super easy, but Fronius does provide a really awesome cheat sheet, very visual, gives you all the details and everything else like that. I'm linking that below on the website so you can actually follow along. But moving into welding, MIG welding. It has a manual mode, right? Every welder has its you know, voltage and its wire feed speed and all the rest of that stuff so you can easily set it up to do whatever it is that you want to do. And that's fantastic. This machine is no different. You can dial it into whatever setting you want all day long and it's all on this nice little LED display and everything else like that. Now, any MIG welder is going to know that's what I want to do and if that's all you need, cool. Trust me, it can definitely do it. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in manual mode or really demonstrating that because, come on, I mean, that's not really that exciting if anyone can just go in there and plug in whatever they want with that experience. What I want to focus on is the synergic mode. Now, synergic welding is basically saying the machine is capable of producing an output based on whatever input you give it. Now, I did make a full episode all about synergic welding or what it is, and you can definitely check that out if you want to learn more about that. But basically saying, you tell this machine what you're welding, what you're welding it with, what thickness or size it is, and what gas is on it, it spits out the weld. It's that easy. So basically saying if you have limited to no experience or if you own a shop or something like that and you just want to park any old so-and-so on that machine, you punch in the numbers, it spits out the deal. There's nothing really more required about it. I mean, it's just that easy. But where it really shines is how detailed and how much effort they put into creating these synergic programs for each one of these metals. It literally is just mindless that you just sit there and pull the trigger and weld like anyone can do it because it's so detailed and it looks like they spent a ton of time trying to put all this stuff together to the point where I'm trying to screw it up and it just doesn't happen. But let's talk about some of that synergic mode and show you some of the really awesome stuff that this thing can do. So we're going to kick our welding extravaganza off here with some steel, because I like welding some steel, especially with MIG. That's what most people do. So I'm going to get this spool loaded up here, get it into the drive rolls, and we're ready to go. In order to really show you this function, I really have to kind of explain this one so we can at least uh, break the ice on exactly uh, what this function is really good for. Now, most of us know or is that type of person that pulls the trigger, lets off, pulls the trigger, lets off, pulls the trigger, lets off, and stitches their way down that joint. They lack the conviction to pull the trigger and just run that sucker all the way down. Now, let me confirm here or clarify, there is absolutely nothing wrong with stitch welding. It is a technique. It is something used by a lot of people, and a lot of people like it. But the only problem with stitch welding is every time you let off that trigger and pull it back again, the gas typically shuts off. Well, this is a really awesome feature built into the Fronius Transseal 2200 called a spot timer. This basically means that you set your on time, your off time, you pull the trigger once, it just starts stitching its way up, blasting every single bit of goodness into that weld, and the best part about it is the gas does not shut off every single time it actually goes off of the actual 
uh, weld itself. What basically means is you pull this trigger, it will stitch its way up all the way from start to finish for you while your finger's on that trigger. The gas doesn't shut off and guess what? You can program your weld to run exactly the way you want it to. That is so friggin' cool. As long as you can figure out how to run it like that, you don't have to be a stitcher. The machine will be the stitcher for you. So with that being said, that's a really awesome feature. I absolutely love it, but let's get into some thicker stuff. Now, this is what we saw in the beginning of the episode where I did this test to actually run it and see, uh, you know, how well it performs when it goes, uh, you know, down and up into ridges and, you know, up and over the valleys and going up the steps and all the rest of that good stuff. Now, all of this is done in manual mode. And, of course, you can see how much wire stick out that we're running here. But in manual mode, we stick with our uh, short circuit transfer or our short circuit welding, which is basically how it all works, which is just like any other welding machine. And it's fantastic. The control is all there, and you can see how it's still working works and chews through all of that quarter inch steel. This is some heavy duty stuff. Now I firmly believe that not a lot of machines will have an issue with quarter inch or thicker stuff. Now obviously the smaller shock boxes, they'll hit their duty cycle in, you know, like two inches. But the beauty of this machine, aside from how controlled it is, is we have many different options. We have lots of different things that we can choose from. Now when we're in the synergic mode, we can still run our short circuit transfer. So if we want our short circuit mode or our crackly bacon sound that we're used to, we can run it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Get some fat stacks, everything's good. Now, if we want to go into some really heavy duty stuff and let the synergic mode take over, it switches itself up to spray transfer. Now, my spray transfer game's a little bit off, but if you are comfortable welding this and you have some practice with it, this stuff, you can just fly through it. But what really gets me is that we have full and complete control over globular transfer. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why would you want to even bother with globular transfer? Why would you practice this? Why would you work with this when it's generally regarded as an undesirable condition? Well, the answer to that is actually really simple. It's generally regarded as an undesirable condition when you have no control over it. When you do have control over it, you get yourself a big, fat, low-riding, hot puddle with some beautiful ripples and stacks inside of it. That is one of those reasons why I like to practice with globular transfer. It's basically the condition you get when you're riding between short circuit mode and spray transfer, or basically saying you have a super hot arc with, uh, instead of a nice crackly bacon sound, you get a more of a hiss and popping sound. But either way, globular transfer, when you have control over it, is some seriously awesome stuff, and we got that in here. So, moving on. Now, if you're anything like me, you could probably care less what the MIG welder does on thick stuff, right? You want to see what it's going to do on thin sheet metal. You want to know about your heat control, all the rest of that good stuff. So take a look at this arc. This is 80,000 thick or 2 millimeter uh, steel. It's, it's nothing fancy, right? We're doing an outside corner joint and look at that arc. I'm not stacking, I'm not stitching, I'm not doing anything except for holding it in one spot and going from point A to point B. This was actually really interesting for me to try this out because it's uh, it kind of defies the logic of what you you know what you know and what you've been trained to do. But as I flip this over here, take a look at the inside of that. Full penetration all the way through, a solid heat signature, and a decent weld profile over the top of it. That is just weird that it didn't blow it up. So I decided to stack up another one. Let's do the same 80 thousandths or 2 millimeter coupons with an eighth inch or 3 millimeter gap. Now while I run this, I want you to make sure that you're paying very close attention to my hands or uh, you know what you would expect to be doing with a joint like this or at least with this giant open gap. Now as we come around here, look at my hands. They are not moving in any direction except for down. There is no weave, there is no nothing. I literally have this thing fired right at the center of that puddle and I'm just going straight down expecting it to blow up. But the heat signature shows it's consistent. The puddle stays completely fluid and as we get to the bottom, we don't even blow it out. This is just absolutely crazy. But I know that a lot of people are reaching for the comments right now and saying I went the wrong direction. So taking that into consideration for you guys, I flipped a Yui and I went right back up from bottom to the top. Now, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't think I could have done this with any other welder, but at the same time, uh, my technique of not moving or not weaving uh, caused me to go a little bit fast and I get some wire sticking out, but the crazy part is that was actually my first run and, you know, oh well, you know? <laughs> 
Now, realistically speaking, I can spend a lot of time talking about the capabilities of the Fronius Transteal 2200 on steel, but that was pretty much the highlights of it, and I promise you, no matter what it is that you're welding, whether it's thick or thin, it will shine. It will absolutely do it with no troubles, and it's hassle-free. Quite literally, anyone can do it. But where I really love playing with this machine, where I love to learn this machine, and where it completely defied everything that I was ever taught about MIG welding aluminum is right here. So we're going to switch this up. We're going to stick it into aluminum mode in our Synergic program. We're going to dial it in, tell it our wire diameter, which is 045. It is 4043 wire. It is straight off of the spool. And when we jog this through, notice that the tip is still attached to the MIG whip and it feeds all the way through with no problems, even straight out of the tip without bird nesting this. Now, initially I was blown away. So I said, well, hey, my first test, as soon as it showed up, I wrapped this sucker around a table and I welded some 3 8 or 10 millimeter thick aluminum and just it blasted it it just burned it right straight you know through into it it was like how is this even possible it defies everything I was ever taught and it welded it like 10 times smoother than I've ever experienced when it comes to MIG welding aluminum it is absolutely brilliant so for the second test I decided let's Walt Disney this thing let's plus it and let's like absolutely try to get this thing to nest so I tied it up into a knot hung it up on the piece of steel so you guys can see it on the vertical one that I did earlier then wrapped it around again and with the same 10 millimeter or 3 8 thick coupon aluminum Aluminum, I just blasted this thing everything that it's got but sadly as I got into it it totally ran out of wire and I was very disappointed but we get it cleaned up we take a look at it unfortunately that little hiccup at the last point there or right there in the middle just before it ended that was uh, where probably where the wire tore loose of the spool and it kind of kind of shot me down just a little bit but you know what it's a pretty nice looking stack I can totally do this and so can anyone else all they got to do is sit there tell the machine what to do and plow it just it just welds it is unbelievable what it can do there was one more program that I really wanted to run on this one and test it out on, and that was stainless steel. But the Synergic program on this particular machine requires you to run a gas mix between 95.5 and 98.2. This is something I don't actually have, and it was kind of hard for me to find, so I didn't get to run it. Instead, I took a look a little bit further down, and you can see that it will do silicon bronze. That's MIG brazing. I just had to try this out. I've never done this before, but, uh, you know, hey, let's throw a spool of my favorite silicon bronze in there. Let's actually load this thing up and pull the trigger on it. Now, the craziest thing is when you look at this footage and you see how it's burning, it's not actually fusing. It's not actually combining those metals like a weld. It's quite literally just burning that silicon bronze right over the top of it and literally creating a brazed joint. It was really crazy. Now, I probably need some practice on this technique, but either way, that was really cool to do, and since I can run it on stainless steel, I might as well just give it a go on that anyway. So, pulling the trigger on an outside corner on some stainless steel, I went back, I gave it a nice little grinding, polished it up really nice, and you can see it really holds nicely, and there's a difference between where it lays down and how it cleans up, just for reference there, but... I mean, this is really cool. I mean, to know that this is capable of doing this, like, really opens up a lot of doors for people. And I'm going to have to practice this a little bit more myself. I also ran some flux cord through it. Now, it's really difficult to get a good solid arc shot of flux cord work because it's so messy. But at the same time, it, you know, running it through the Synergic program or running it that way, I've never experienced that kind of control out of flux cord. Like, it just, it really just lays in there and it, it works and functions like you've never experienced it before. Usually it's kind of difficult, but I was able to get a nice little uh, weave pattern out of it, which is really weird. I mean, it's, it's super cool. I mean, it literally just brings a big giant smile to my face knowing that there's a machine out there that is so friggin' capable. It just, it is unbelievable what this thing can do. And I haven't even barely scratched the surface of the, I believe, 26 different programs that this has in the Synergic mode to weld anything. And quite literally, you can sit anyone at this machine with any experience level and they can run it and it will produce. I've never seen anything that can do this. Now, I'd love to sit here and talk about this all day long and keep on going with those programs, but unfortunately, we got to move on and we got to talk about other things. So, let's get into some stick welding. So I really haven't stick welded as much as I used to in the past in my previous jobs and career, but you know what? I can still lay some down. So, let's get this thing going. Well, I'm going to try and get this thing going at least. You know what? Hey, 
I still need some practice. But either way, here's some 7018 on some quarter inch. Uh, nice little lap joint. It, yeah, you know what? Everything pretty much works the way it's supposed to. What you expect out of a 7018 rod welding virtually anything. You know, very smooth, very nice. I mean, I really can't complain. And of course, it's smooth enough to where you can get that ever so gratifying 7018 auto peel action. I mean, it's not bad. It actually does the job quite well. But you usually expect 7018 to go just right. So let's just play around with some other stuff. A little stainless action. Uh, I had some of this left over from a previous episode where I was running it. And uh, you know what? No problems. Except I did run it just a little bit hot. Warped the crap out of it. Got a lot of color on it. But <laughs> like I said, it's all practice. Now if that wasn't enough for you, wait till you see what else it can do in stick mode. Well, all right, that's pretty much it. Look, it, it, it'll burn some 7018. It'll do some uh, some three series stainless rods. I'm sure it'll do some like, I don't know, maybe some six series, not 6010. I had a hard time getting it to light up an aluminum rod, even though those things suck anyway. But uh, you know what? It could do a little bit better on the stick side, but that's kind of looking at it from the opinion or the side of somebody who does a lot of stick welding, not a guy like me. Uh, but uh, it'll burn some 7018 and a few other things quite nicely. Let's start talking about TIG welding. Check this out. What you just saw is the TAC function. This is a variable pulse frequency based on your amperage. So as the amperage is low, the frequency is high. As the frequency is high, the amperage is low. This basically goes in and allows your sheet metal to rapidly heat up and stick together and basically cool and solidify as fast as possible, making tacking a total breeze. Now, since the Transteel 2200 is a scratch start only TIG, this is pre-programmed, but all of my other Fronius machines, with the exception of two of them, have this function in it, and it is definitely my absolute favorite favorite feature in the entire world to have on a TIG welder. Now it was actually kind of crazy to find out that this function was actually on this machine. And then you look further into it, you realize that on this TIG side, it has a friggin' pulser on it. Like that is just absolutely incredible. But what's really incredible about the pulser, it goes to 990 pulses per second, should you ever need that many. This is just absolutely bonkers that it just allows you to do so much. But I decided to give it a test on just a couple pulses per second. I believe I said it around two or so and uh, let loose on some tubes. And I was just, I was told totally blown away by how smooth this is and most people usually complain about scratch start only TIGs and not having the variable amperage that it becomes very difficult but this pulser is spot on. Now all of the background and time on is all pre-programmed but it's not like it misses at all. It is perfectly dead on right where it needs to be. Absolutely incredible. Now what we're seeing right now is some quarter inch stainless steel that I also do the exact same thing with. Set up the pulses on it, blast right on through it and see what it can do. I also threw down some regular, you know, plain old welding over it, and it just, it's complete control, perfect welding. Now that is going to wrap it up for this episode, and I really hope that this demonstration has uh, helped you through your decision-making process, or even considering the Transteel 2200 uh, from Fronius. I mean, if you ask me, I think it should pretty much be a staple in everybody's shop or garage or anything like that, because it's just, it's endless what this thing can do, and that is absolutely amazing. It's I, I just run out of words, but you know, got to try to keep it fair and unbiased. So special thanks to Fronius for sending us the Transteel 2200. It's been a pleasure working with this machine. You'll definitely see it in some future episodes. Now, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down in the comments box below. You can also hit us up on the fabricationseries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator or facebook.com slash series. All that information is in the description below. I encourage you to like and subscribe to check out more welding machine reviews and really awesome content. And I will see you guys on the next episode.